people of the world. An overview of effective live streaming for nonprofit organizations. On page SEO, the key considerations for ranking higher in the Google machine, how to manage negative social media comments that none of us ever receive, right? Am I right? Google upgrading rich results test moves it out of beta. What the heck does that mean? Will repeatedly searching and clicking my site increase rankings? Who knows? 13 Facebook targeting options you need to know about. And finally, five useful Google Search Console features you might not know about. This is marketing as a foreign language. Oh my goodness, it's Tuesday. An overview of effective live streaming for nonprofit organizations. Here it is again, the COVID-19 pandemic. And hello to Esther Stas, welcome to chat. Has impacted almost everything about how we go about our day-to-day lives, blah, 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 blah. Nonprofits need to do what they can to navigate this new situation. What are we talking about? We're talking about the benefits of live streaming can you believe it 80 percent of consumers prefer to watch live videos from a brand than read a blog well that's obvious blogs are boring 63 percent of people aged 18 to 34 watch live streaming content regularly i'm 36 so i'm not part of that 63 percent more than one in five facebook videos are live and are watched three times longer than pre-recorded videos watching live videos is fun because there's a good chance you're gonna watch them fail. Also, shout out to the two likes this morning. We're on fire, chat. Killing it, two likes. Uh, 87% of audiences would prefer to watch online versus on TV if it means more behind the scenes content. With more people tuning in and more opportunities for reach, live streaming can be great for cause awareness and exposure. Oh snap, three likes, let's go gamers. What is really going on today on fire? Who knew that Tuesday, July 7th would be the day that we hit the maximum number of likes we've received thus far? Three. Oh my gosh. Could it be four? Lanasia coming in? Oh my gosh. My heart swells. It swells with joy. Do you understand me? So much swelling, so much joy. How to get started with live streaming for your nonprofit or for anyone, obviously. Facebook, live obviously, group or profile, Instagram, nonprofits and individuals can go live from any account. Twitch is the world's largest live streaming platform. I don't know if y'all are, you know, familiar with what's going on Twitch, but oh me, oh my, so much Twitch, so much winning. You definitely want to check out Twitch. I love me some Twitch. Uh, I've got 145 followers, I think, for my chess stream on Twitch right now good stuff check out Couchmania on twitch uh if you are unfamiliar with the culture i'm telling you it's an amazon-owned com- company and uh twitch is amazing anything from video gamers chess players physical fitness songs djs you name it it's all on twitch uh youtube also offering a live stream opportunity as you are obviously aware zoom enabling pain lists whatever that is to end attendees to join in group calls so which platform to go with linkedin it turns out uh is hard to get into i petitioned to be accepted to do live streams on linkedin and i did not hear back Uh, apparently they have received an inundation if you will of applicants that are interested in streaming live on linkedin youtube obviously easy to go with facebook easy to go with etc esther writes i did i got your back I got your back, Esther Sass. Get your insurance quotes with the Sass agency, you crazy people. What are you waiting for? Okay, create buzz. Oh, create buzz for your live stream. Oh my gosh. Look at at her. Who is that? Jane Goodall, that's right. Jane Goodall. I need to create buzz for my live stream. All right, this is obvious. On page SEO, the key considerations for ranking higher on Google. 
Are you looking for ways to improve your rankings on Google? Writes Mark Walker Ford. Want to know the key SEO considerations when optimizing your business website and content? Oh, please tell me. Here are a few that make the list. Content length. Oh, great. Sentence length. Joy. Flesh reading test. Subheading distribution and keywords. Blah. This is garbage. This is garbage. On-page SEO checklist. Ugh. This is so bad. Content length. 2,000 plus words. Average content length of top 10 results. You know what? Fine. There is some truth to long, longer form content. But here's the thing. If you just write 2,000 words, ain't nobody going to read that. What you need to do is you need to break it up with a ton of headings and a ton of subheadings. You understand me? Like people don't want to read by and large. What they want to do is skim. People skim the interwebs. Do you understand me? So 2,000 word article. Yeah. Woo. Stand up desk. Am I right? Stand up desk. Uh, content length. Yes, obviously. So headers, you want like eight of them. Then you want subheaders. And then you want the bulk of the content. But then you also want like the summary of each of those items. Uh, so when they say 2,000 word content, it's obviously not just 2,000 word content. Uh, flesh reading and text visibility. No. Avoid passive voice. No. Sentence length. No. This is all garbage. Uh, at the end of the day, you want to create content, obviously, for SEO. That includes, oh, I don't know, a video maybe, and maybe some images that don't come from Shutterstock. This is ideal. If you can have content, photo, content, photo, content, photo, content, photo, and that actually makes sense, then do that. But uh, no, I don't believe that these pieces of information they're giving you are necessarily uh, good. So you do definitely want a meta title and meta description. This right here, this purple right here, that's your meta title. You can write that. The meta description is the black text that appears underneath the meta title. You definitely want to write those. There's no question about that. Don't spam this with keywords. Nobody wants that. Um, people keep talking about this alt tag keyword and alt tag. So let me understand. Let me explain to you alt tags. So when you go into the back end of your website, and you have a photo, you can include an alt tag. Okay, here's the deal. Alt tags are designed for people who cannot see the image. So what people do, because people by and large don't know what they're doing when it comes to SEO, is they will spam with the keyword. For example, you have a picture of a dog and they'll write Las Vegas plumber. Or there'll be a picture of someone running a race and they'll go into the alt tag and they'll say race. This is stupid. Um, Google understands what an image is and you're not doing a service to blind people by not actually describing what it is that's happening in the image. This is the point of the alt tag, which is to say uh, alt tag keyword optimization is largely garbage. Um, unless you literally have a picture of a plumber, you wouldn't even write Las Vegas plumber in there because that's dumb. Who would do that? Google's aware of that. And I would imagine they're actually docking you points for messing up uh, the experience of people who can't see the image, which is ridiculous. This is new. Delete zombie pages. Okay. Let's say you have been writing blog content for 10 years and five years ago you hired a company and they created very bad content uh they are recommending now that you go back in and you delete that content i don't know if that's the way to go i honestly don't i'm on the fence about it because if the content quality is at least okay and has been okay for a decent amount of time it in my mind is google's responsibility to not index that old content that's on them i don't think that users that website owners should go back and destroy all of this work that they paid for that they worked hard for just because zombie pages might be a thing now if you hired some company and they created randomized content so there's this thing called article spinning where like the content is truly garbage. It's terrible, then you obviously delete it. But 
going back and deleting zombie pages, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Now, going back in time and updating this content, if it's good, this makes a lot of sense to me. This is something that you want to do. Moving right along, how to manage negative social media comments for likes. Oh, snap. Thank you, chat. You're the best, the best ever. How to manage negative social media comments at some stage, according to Andrew Hutchinson with social media today, all social media managers will have to deal with negative comments on the rampages or posts. Some of these comments will be from blatant trolls. I am trolled constantly on my Twitch stream, Kautamania. People trying to hijack the conversation and are making loosely connected remarks based on the original post, while others will be clear and passionate criticisms of your brand or product. The former, in many cases, can be ignored, but the latter needs to be addressed. Okay. When you see a negative comment, your first reaction may be to respond in kind and dish out some of your own harsh response. This is ridiculous. No, it's not. Who does this? Who gets into battles, battles online? Uh, I don't see it, but I will take, I will guide you through what I did. Um, I'm the only, the only bad review we ever got. Are you ready? Here's Send It Rising, 20 reviews. Gaze upon them. Yes. Yeah. So many five stars. Uh oh, there's a one star. So many five stars. All the five stars. All the love. Do you see all the responses? Response from owner. Yes. Respond as owner. Hitting the thumbs up button. Yes. You want to do these things. Fantastic. Okay, great. So Send It Rising, by and large, has great stuff. But we did receive a bad review. Let's dive in, shall we? Skadoosh. Okay. So apparently I gave, I gave bad advice. You see that? Not I didn't give bad advice. I gave bad advice. Okay. So I chatted so many times. So many times. Uh, so many times. And uh, okay. So responding. You see the length here? So one long paragraph, okay, great, fantastic. And then here's the response. I just laid out the conversation I had, which I had over and over and over and over again. And there you have it. SEO is a changing and difficult competition with many moving parts. I wish you the best. I wish you the best with your business. It's not that hard to stay positive when someone writes you a bad review. It's really not. So. When people are saying don't respond when, you know, you're feeling cranky, yeah, just don't do that. Wish them the best. In order to formulate a better approach, the team from Digital Giants have put together this simple overview of how to respond to negative mentions. Oh, great. Message received. Read the message carefully. What is the root of the problem? How can you help? Take a screenshot. It's a good idea to document the message. Oh, great. Don't delete. Ooh. Don't delay. Keep your cool. This is dumb. We all know how to respond to negative of comment. Google upgrades rich results test moves it out of beta. Google is upgrading the rich results test to support all of the same rich results features supported by Google search. What the heck does that mean? Google is officially moving to moving the rich results test out of beta. Now that it fully supports all Google search rich results features. Okay. So rich results, rich results. I'm looking for an actual example. Here we go, example of search preview on rich results test. So you can barely see it, but you've got the listing and then you've got all these questions and answers after it. That's an example of a rich result. Um, another example, I believe, would be like the five stars um, from the reviews that you have. Um, in a blog post, Google explains a few things about rich results test. The rich results test that more experienced SEOs are likely familiar with, quote, the test returns errors and warnings we detect on your page. Note that errors disqualify your page from showing up as a rich result. While warnings might limit the appearance, your page is still eligible for showing up as a rich result. For example, if there was a warning for a missing image property, that page could still appear as a rich result just without an image. What we're talking about is getting uh, a fantastic, gorgeous 
rich results uh, in regards to questions or extra reviews, a larger Google presence in organic. Okay, this is what you want. Um, and this rich results test will help you preview the code is my understanding. So for example, here it says not all markup is eligible for rich results. So you're working with a provider. They are attempting to get say reviews to appear in your organic search, running through the rich results test. It tells you whether or not it's working. Shout out to Lisa Rankin. Our experience with Shalee was five star. Get it, Lisa, so much winning, so much Lisa ranking. Rankin, Rankin, ranking, you get it. It's a pun. More about Google's rich results test. Google's rich results test was introduced in 2017 as a solution for testing rich snippets, rich cards, oh geez, and other type of rich elements. It offers a more accurate representation of how a page is displayed. This is a good tool because Google's structured data testing stuff is uh, the future of results. If you can get a rich result to display, there's a good chance you're gonna make those dollars and dollar bills. Will repeatedly searching and clicking my site increase rankings? Hmm, rarely in SEO do we have absolute answers except this one, <laughs> without a doubt, clicks alone are not a ranking factor. According to Tony Wright with Search Engine Journal, this week's Ask an SEO Question comes from Jeffrey in Taiwan. Thanks, Jeffrey. He asks, will repeatedly searching and clicking my site increase rankings? The answer is no. Rarely in SEO do we have absolute answers, but I can unequivocally say that repeatedly clicking on your own site will not result in an increase in rankings ever. If clicking on your site, your own site, were a ranking factor, the top spots of every major keyword would be populated by sites with the resources to hire people to click on their site now. I will uh, provide a counter argument to this, which is to say that I do not buy the argument that if someone, not you, obviously signed in under your own dumb Google account, seriously, this is not a strategy, but if someone clicks on your website, they stay for a minute, they click onto two or three internal pages, they found you organically, they found you through a keyword that is on your list of keywords. If all of these things transpire and they are on your website, all of the data that is coming from that particular site visit, I do believe uh, is involved with rankings, which is to say, is clicking on your own site a strategy? No, but does the way people interact with your website affect how you rank? My answer would be yes. Unfortunately, I do know that there are some people out there that have combed Amazon Mechanical Turk and Fiverr to hire an army of folks to click on their site. Well, this is interesting. So apparently you can go to fiverr.com, but here's the issue. If you have 7,200 people from Turkmenistan on fake accounts, clicking on your website, I don't know, gonna put up a couple flags. So I can't make the leap here with our author saying that people on your website doesn't have an effect when you can't go to Fiverr and actually hire uh, American people with legitimate Gmail accounts to actually go to a website and click around. There are others that I have, excuse me, there are others that have created sophisticated IP spoofing mechanisms to simulate clicks on sites for alleged SEO purposes, and he's going all in saying that without a debt, clicks alone are not a ranking factor, but clicks plus time on site plus return visitation, huh? is that a ranking factor? I would argue yes, it is. In fact, as far as we know, there are no ranking factors that are based on any click-through behavior at all. Ha, Tony Wright. Oh, Tony Wright and I, I think, are diametrically opposed on that particular piece of information. Beware of old information, SEO myths, and flat out lies. In order to be effective at SEO, you must have discernment. Oh, geez. We need discernment. Obviously, the best way to understand what's effective is to test things yourself. But that's not always possible. Testing is simply not practical for every situation. Those are three sentences that don't need to be there. Wow. Look at this guy. Look at Tony Wright coming in with, we are extremely blessed. Thanks, Tony. However, to work in an industry where information is freely shared, but even those with the best of intentions may share tips and tricks that are either somewhat exaggerated, impractical, or irrelevant, or even misleading. And of course, SEO is ever-changing. Blah, blah, blah. Holy smokes. What is the point? 
there is no magic bullet. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Many SEO pros are searching for the Holy Grail, that one technique that can put them on top. He's saying it doesn't exist. I would agree with that. I would agree with the fact that it is a holistic approach. No one wants to hear that, by the way. Here's what I think you should be doing. You should be creating consistent blog content. Those blogs should not just be words. They should be words and photos and video. You should probably have a live stream. You should have a YouTube channel. All the YouTube videos that you create should have a link in it. If you just put the URL, that's not going to work. You have to have the HTTPS. You should have an HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash. That means that your site is secure. Uh, you should probably be advertising with Google ads. You probably should be advertising with Facebook. But again, it depends where you're at. If you rank a bajillion and you're nowhere even in the ballpark, uh, you know, how much money and time do you really want to invest? It's a case by case basis, which is why info at senditrising.com is, you know, an email that you can shoot on over. Info at senditrising.com. Skadoosh. And there you go. Now you're talking. You can also ask questions in chat. <gasps> And I might know the answer to them. Think about it like Google. When evaluating SEO information, I found it helpful to try and think like Google when I'm building a site or content. My goal is to create value. Obviously, valuable content. Ah, boring. Moving on. 13 Facebook targeting options you need to know about. Setting up Facebook audiences for the first time. Learn about 13 audience targeting options available for your Facebook ad account and how to use them. Tim Jensen, four hours ago on the Search Engine Journal. Look at this. Create a custom audience based on website app activity. That's kind of cool. Customer list, if you got emails, offline activity, what? Use Facebook sources. You can create a custom audience based on video. Shopping, I think that was new. We covered that in a previous episode. To help you sift through all the choices, and there are a lot, the article will summarize each. Ooh. Number one, website retargeting. It's uh, likely the most familiar option as a starting point for any Facebook advertising strategy. You should install the tracking pixel on your website. This is true. And set up some basic retargeting audiences. But think beyond simply targeting everyone who visits your site and segment audiences based on pages they viewed. This is a good article. Okay, retargeting. They come to your website. You have the Facebook tracking pixel in there. You are aware that they came to your website and now you're serving them ads. But you can serve them ads specifically geared towards the pages they visited. For instance, you can target users based on specific categories or, excuse me, of services they're interested in. For example, here, we've got add people to your audience contains, and then we've got forward slash products, which means they visited the product page, which means to say that they are in a certain, a certain uh, vertical. Facebook also lets you target people who are spending the most time on your site, you gotta love that. Top five, 10 or 25%, this feature can help narrow down your lists to those have been uh, the most interested in browsing, I love that. So if they're hanging out on the site, you can target them. Video view retargeting combined with solid video creative, video view retargeting offers a great way to segment out those with higher intent from top of funnel targeting. You can choose to retarget people who have viewed specific videos. I'm loving this. As well as narrowing down lists by time spent or percentage watch. So, for example, on the homepage of senditrising.com, there's a video of me giving a book speech at the release of uh, Everybody's Doing It, Advertising Redefined. And uh, if someone watches it for five seconds, they are a much different person than, uh, than someone who watched it for five minutes. Much different than the person who watched it for 20 five minutes. I definitely want to be marketing to the person who watched the whole thing because they clicked the play button. Their toddlers came in the room. They forgot about the video. It ran all the way to the end of it because no one is going to watch that entire video. Showing the most engaged watchers a lead generation or purchase focused ad can help improve conversion rates by first identifying those most interested in your brand. Lead form retargeting. Oh, what the heck is that? If you're running lead ads on Facebook, you can build audiences for people who interact with the forms. Ah, someone sends you a contact us form submission and you can retarget them. Someone signs up for your amazing ebook, you can retarget them. Love it. Customer list targeting. As long as these people have opted into receiving marketing messages from your brand, the list could include anything from newsletter subscribers. Okay, we get that. So you're at your email list. Facebook page engagement. 
Uh, perfect way to reach those who haven't visited your website but have shown interest in your brand by liking a photo of one of your products. That is interesting. So now you're reaching folks that have engaged with your brand on Facebook in some way, shape, or form, but may have uh, may not have necessarily gone to your website yet. Instagram engagement, people who engage with your Instagram apps. I don't know. I don't know how many small businesses have an app nowadays, but apparently that's an option. Offline activity. This makes no sense to me. This I don't understand. If you set up offline event tracking for Facebook, you can retarget people based on actions they take. Like what? Offline events might include physical in-store purchases that can be tied to specific users, phone calls, or qualified lead data from people who have been vetted out by your sales staff? What? I don't get it. Someone comes in to your store, they buy something, you don't have their email, but you can somehow add them. I don't get it. If you set up offline event tracking for Facebook, you can retarget people based on the actions they take. Offline events might include physical in-store purchases based on the credit card number. It must be based on your, uh, your point of sale system. That's gotta be it, something like that. Like add the card I'm seeing here. So they interact with your point of sale system and that somehow ties to Facebook ads. Hello. Event engagement, if you've promoted any sort of event on your Facebook page, either physical or virtual events, you can build audiences based on their interaction with the event page. This type of targeting can be powerful to make previous attendees aware of another event. Okay, we get it. Moving right along. That was interesting. Five useful Google Search Console features you might not know about. Google Search Console, for those of you that are unfamiliar, is incredibly important. It is the most information that Google gives us about your website. So let's dive in here, some hidden gems. Where are they? URL inspector tool, oh geez. This is Google Search Console's answer to the old Google Webmaster tools fetch as Google bot. It performs the same function, allows you to submit your URLs for indexing. Okay, so we had a potential client who shall remain nameless, who uh, developed a new website and all of the links broke. You could use this URL inspector tool um, in that event to help solve these problems. It allows you to see any web page just as Google sees it. It's a great tool to find problematic pages. Uh, for example, if your site has been hacked and is being used to display information that is part of another website, a form of cloaking, not to be confused with iframes, then the URL inspection tool will allow you to see in indexation issues. Okay. Find obscure URL errors like soft 404s. Basically, you go to the Google Search Console and it tells you what's wrong. This is the easy, simple kind of, you know, like if you see a bunch of errors, you can always just go to your web developer and say, hey, I've got all these errors on my Google Search Console. You don't necessarily need to know how to solve these. And not all of them are critical must solve now errors. But if you're not familiar with them or not aware of them, then obviously this is a problem. Um, I also love that you can actually get a sense of what's ranking. I think we're talking about that here. We're taking a look at a specific query. You can get a sense of what you're getting clicks from Google, or rather uh, what keywords you're getting Google clicks from. Okay, dokie, it is so 1058. We are gonna wrap this up. An overview of effective live streaming for nonprofit organizations. Well, that's for everybody. Uh, as you can see here, live streaming is the greatest thing that ever happened to the internet in the history of the internet. It's so much fun. You really should consider doing it. I'm doing it every day, as you're aware, 10.30 to 11 Pacific Standard Time. Um, I hope you're all enjoying it. You may consider doing it. Um, there are huge, huge, huge SEO benefits. We are seeing a considerable jump in our rankings just because blah, 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 every keyword I say that is related to internet marketing, and there are quite a few of them, are helping the Google machine, uh, which of course is YouTube and Google, The parent company Alphabet understand that we are in fact an internet marketing company and that we can be trusted with high rankings on page SEO, create great content. This is obvious. Consider embedding video, consider multiple photos, know that everyone just skims content. It's 2020. How to manage negative social media comments. Don't be an idiot would be my major recommendation there. Don't say anything you're going to regret. 
cool off first. Google upgrades rich results test. Okay, so if you want little uh, question answer underneath your search result, you want little stars underneath your search results, um, the answer to that, of course, is rich results. That is uh, incredibly hard to pull off, but as Google pulls uh, pushes it forward, um, this rich results test will help you understand if your code is correct. Repeatedly searching and clicking on my site, increasing rankings. No, it does not do that. Uh, oh my gosh, Jason Noggle coming in on chat with interesting content. Interesting content indeed, Jason Noggle. For those of you who don't know, Jason's Noggle, Jason's last name Noggle is German for nail. So, nailed it. Noggled it, am I right? Hashtag Jason, hashtag Noggle. Uh, this particular article is all about retargeting on Facebook. Holy smokes. You can retarget anybody. Anybody. It's crazy. It's crazy. So we went over all of the ways that you can retarget on Facebook, even offline. What? And, of course, wrapping it all up, if you don't have search, search console set up on your website, you might want to consider doing that. If uh, your internet marketing company or company doesn't have search console set up, that is obviously a huge, huge mistake. Biggest mistake. That was like Australian Trump for a second. A huge mistake there. Right, mate. All right. Uh, thanks so much, everyone. You are the best, the greatest human beings in the history of all humanity. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the love. Much appreciated. We're here every single day, 1030. Can you believe it? Uh, marketing as a foreign language ends right now. Thanks, guys. Okay, bye.